What is going on YouTube and welcome to day six of 100 days to becoming a Python master. Uh, so let's just get right to it. Again, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it every damn day practically. Don't forget, make sure you're doing, doing days one, two, three, four, five, and six today. Every day you're adding a new video, a new piece of code, but you also should be doing the days leading up to it previously. Um, and we're on day six. And I've said before, when I get to, I think it's day eight or nine, we're going to be seeing like almost 50 to 60 lines of code within each particular day. It's going to jump fast. Um, primarily, that is to uh, weed out the posers. So for today, let's rock and roll. Let me get my debugger going. We're going to debug six. Yep. Give me my console. And I can clear you out. I don't want you right now. So let's get to it. So we're going to create a cool calculator today. That's all. So we're given the formula. The formula Q equals the square root of... 2 times C times D divided by H. Now we're utilizing parentheses um, because we do want to utilize PEMDOS. PEMDOS is parentheses, exponent multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Uh, it's the order of operations in mathematics. Uh, and then it wants us to find the variable D, of course, if we were given C and H, right? And of course, we have the number 2. So for I just created C equals 50, H equals 30. Those are just variable C, variable H with their inputs. F8, that's just going to go into memory, nothing special there. Importing the math module. Why? Because we're going to, there are certain methods that we want to call from the math module. If we didn't have the math module, then we would have had to define the function and, and tell the system for this function, this is what I want you to do. Um, but we're going to utilize the math because it's there. So importing math. Now I'm creating x equals an empty list. So of course we have a class list and it's empty. Y equals, now we're going to get into it. I for I in input. Now the input is going to say, give me a number. We're going to put in that input. And then we're saying dot split via the comma. So let's do, 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 do F8. Give me a number. So let's go over and we'll give it a number 10. We're going to hit enter. So now, just so you can see, we do have a variable class. That should be enough space for today. We have a variable class y, a variable y, which is a class list, and it just has the number 10 because that's what we put it, that's what we gave it as an input. Now it says for d in y, and d is just going to be 10 because that's what it's calling, because that's what we put in for y, that was the input that we utilized. x dot append, append is the method, we're appending x. So now this is when we're calling our empty list, our empty list is x, and we're saying append it. So in this case, we're x dot append, what are we appending to? Now don't get thrown off by this, but it's going to be, we're going to, it's working, we're reading it from outwards in, but we're going to understand it from inwards out. Um, so x dot, and anybody who, who watches um, Silicon Valley, I think it's in season one or two, where they, they discover inside out. Regardless, let's move forward. So x dot append. String int round, math dot square root, and then we have our formulas. So let's go inside our formulas. So we have 2 dot C, C we know is 50, times a float, floating number of D. For D, you can say, where the hell is D coming from? Well, we, we assign D for D in Y. D is going, right now D is 10. That's what it has in memory. And then divided by H, and H is 30, which we can see from above. That was a, a given, a given variable that we had. And then it's going to take that, that math that it does, and it's going to apply the square root. Square root function is, is a method from the math module. So we're saying from the math module that we imported, use your function of square, or use your method rather of square root. And that's all coded in the math module. Take that number and round it. So we're getting rid of the decimal portion of the number. Turn it into an integer. And you could have stopped there if you just wanted to return that. And then we're going to turn that integer into a string. So we're just taking a three and then turning it into a three, utilizing quotation marks. And the reason for that is because we then want to print out the join method. And in order to convert the integer integer to using the join method, join method it only works on strings, so we have to utilize that. So now we're going to go through. So now we're down to six. And so we started originally at ten. It did the math, and now it gave it when it did it when it did its its math. The x dot append x is our list. It got appended to the number six because that was the calculation that it did. Because again, remember, we're looking for D. We don't know D. We know C. We know H. And we gave the input for Y. But we don't yet know D. So we're going to F8 through this. And 
on the right, it did good, it put it out. It's always good when this stuff works. It gave me the number six because that was going to be the answer. Now, we could, I wonder if we could, let me try something. I don't know. It will, yep. So, utilizing multiple different comma separated values, we can get multiple answers that are output for multiple Ds. Uh, for that mathematical function. So if we did, let's even, uh, let's quickly run a debug on this. And let me just go through till we get, oops, a daisy. Give me a number. We're going to do 10, 12, 100, 1,000, 1,500. So now in my y variable for i, i for i in input. Now that we have multiple i's, now we'll iterate through that input. And it's going to, obviously, we already split those up all by commas. Um, F8, we have 10, it gives me 6. And then for 12, I get 6. For 100, I get 18. For 1,000, I get 58. And for 71, I get a D of 7. I'm sorry, for 1,500, I get a D of 71. Because, again, we're trying to find D. That's what the mathematical application is doing. It's creating a float of whatever that number is going to be based on the input that we gave it. And then it's joining everything. So we're just going to get our answers that are printing out 6, 6, 18, 58, and 71. Sweet. Play with it, break it, rock and roll, take out string, and find that you'll get an error because you can't utilize the join function, uh, the join method. Sorry, I always do that. The join method on the string, on the integer operators. You can only do it on string data types. Uh, so that's it for today. Uh, video number six. Don't forget to do numbers video. Uh, video numbers one, two, three, four, and five. Do six. Play with it, mess with it, get your syntax down. Um, and one one of the big reasons why I love the developer environments is that even just look at this. Like I'm on, I'm over here at the end of the formula. I'm going to highlight over the quotes, and you can see that I'm on the quote that's on the right, but it's also showing me its corresponding quote on the left. So I know that the quote on the right is closing off the formula. I'm going to go one more to the right. Now I know it's closing off the um, calling of the math dot square root method from the module. I'm going again. Now we're closing off the round, then the int, then the string. That's just helpful when we're doing different syntax pieces, especially when you get a stupid error and it's all because of something like that, like it's missing. Uh, watch, I'm going to take off one of those. So you can see I took off one quotation mark, so now I'm closing off integer, but I haven't closed off my string. So And I already have my red circle up here. So if I try to run this, I'm going to get an error, and it's telling me invalid syntax. Um, now, even though I'm at print.join, I'm going to go up one line because that's the line that's screwing it up. And sure enough, when I go through, I say, all right, what's going on? I'm closing off math, closing off round, and string doesn't have a close. So, and I have the red line there as well. So I'll close it off. And now it is going to be a happy puppy. And we can do it. And we get our answers. Sweet. Have a great day, guys. Uh, come back for video number seven. Um, and again, we're going to start having a heck of a lot more coding examples within each particular example. It's no longer going to be one for one, one code example for one day. So take it easy. Have a great day.